And now, without further ado, I have the distinguished honor and privilege of presenting to you the Queen of Color, the Mother of Artists, globally acclaimed, award-winning Master Acrylic Artist, and the star of our show, Ginger Cook, as she once again mesmerizes her audience with the daring do's and don'ts of painting with acrylic. What? Let's try that again. I still had us muted. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Put that back. Put that back. Go ahead. Put it back. Okay. No, no, no. Put it down. 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 Okay. Ready? Look over at me. Look yeah. at me. And I go. Hi. This is Ginger Cook. <laughs> we think we can do better with the sound tonight. <laughs> Hey, this is know. John over there pushing buttons. Obviously, he just muted us. This wasn't a sale. Probably thinking, oh, man, there they go again, those nut bars. Can't they get their toys right? But you have to understand, we're in the middle of a hurricane here. and It's mostly over, but it's not. And um, I want to say, look, this is Houston, Texas. We're just slightly out of the city. We still have Internet. I talked to my daughter, Cinnamon, today, and she just lost hers, though you may have seen her walking bravely around Humble in the rain. This is... This is not a kid that likes to get wet. <laughs> um, this was really brave of her to show you guys what it's like in Humble because they're up on a little hill. Like there's no hills in Texas, but they got one. And uh, so that helped them. And we're sort of a little higher ground than some of our neighbors. There was just a big rescue going on this afternoon right behind us, a couple of streets over, uh, where some people were trapped. Because what's happening now, the rain has stopped for the most part, but the water is rising. So last night we had we did a, we ventured a live broadcast. I started to tell you we got through about uh, half of this, and then what happened was we lost the sound. It's so funny I'm telling you that, and there's no sound in the beginning. <laughs> well, see, that's what kind of a little segue in there. A little segue. <laughs> so the thing of it is, is that we still had a recording on our end, but the sound was gone on our end too. So what we have to do is we have the full recording. So about 30 minutes of it, I need to do a voiceover, and then I will put that on our website. The problem is we've been really busy today. We'll get that done by Friday. Hopefully that'll be up there, and you'll be able to see the complete lesson, and it'll be free on our website. But right now, i got to tell you that, you know, just give us a, you know, couple of days on this because we don't always have power. We, we really are in the middle of a, you know, hurricane. That Nothing's open. There's not a gas station or two, but none of the stores are open. No one can get to work. There's... Thousands and thousands and thousands of people that are homeless in Houston. It's a deal. So, the, uh, so bearing in mind the disaster we had last <laughs> night, you said, you know what? I have a good idea. For you, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this nifty painting that we're going to do tonight, and I'm going to pre-record the whole lesson, just me and you talking about how to do this. And then I thought on the live show, we would go into some depth on things I think you need to know on that. And one of the reasons we got a little late start was because we had to upload the lesson to YouTube, and now it's probably processing. So about the time, probably about 30 minutes after we sign off, this should be up there. It's, you know how these things are. It's processing. Does that make sense? Yeah, it's processing now. It's 35% processed. It's 35% processed. So hopefully, so this is what we're going to do tonight. We're going to answer some questions. I'm going to show you some nifty tricks about perspective. We're going to talk about other fall paintings we've got. We're going to play our trivia. We're going to answer your questions. We want to thank um, uh, Kim Song and Wendy and... Kim Song. Kim's what? Kim Sim. 
Why Kim is it always Sim. Kim Sung? Wait, is she Samsung for you? I mean, <laughs> and we're Apple people. What's going on over there? Listen, peanut gallery. Hush. <laughs> hush. Just ask him. Hush. You and the bear. Hush. <laughs> so, so, no more talking out of you tonight. <laughs> And Sandra, too. She's on. And Sandra. So, thanks, Sandra. So, I think, you know, we really appreciate it. So, this, we're all troopers here. We're just going to see how it goes. So, if John would be so kind as to uh, zoom Drop on down to the floor. To, to, on, onto the um, table. I'm going to just show you that one of the things I've noticed that when we do, one of the things that just discombobulates, bobulates, discombobulates people, for those of you who English is the second language, you're going, what is she talking about? Really frustrates, throws people for a loop. My mother used to say that, did that throw you for a loop? And I think that what it means is you just feel like sitting and spinning, right? <laughs> because you're going, ah! So, is painting... Uh, you know, doing anything that involves perspective, and benches really seem to throw people off. So even though I have a wonderful explanation in this video on how to do and freehand this bench in, right, and a great explanation on how to do this, we're going to go over it again tonight, too. Sometimes seeing things from a different viewpoint, you know, thinking about things, you know, something will click in your mind, and you'll go, oh, that makes sense. I get it now. So we're, we're going for the I get it now moment. That's what we're going for tonight. And so that's what we'll be doing. And then also, I wanted you to know, if you're liking fall scenes, uh, just uh, last week we did one of these on YouTube. That's a YouTube fall scene, beautiful fall scene. See how nice that would look if you did, you know, did a couple of these together. And, uh, you know, just to, to have a little fall collection. Uh, one of the other, the last year, I think, on YouTube, we did one. Of, this is one of our fall scenes we've got on YouTube. Isn't that pretty with the purple in the trees and these rocks? Um, this was one of my favorites, all-time favorite fall scenes on, on YouTube, and, uh, and, and so that's there. So we've got actually a playlist about called Fall, and so if you look for that, you'll see all the fall pictures we have. And then on our own website, uh, this was one of my favorites done with a palette knife. This is a, you know, a swing over puddle on a tree. This, shows, this was all done with a palette knife. This one, I can't remember where this one was. I think this one ended up on our website. But I was thinking, this is pretty. It was pretty simple. But what if, now listen, you guys, you've got to use your imagination here. What if you put a deer right there? Wouldn't that be nice, little deer? Now, on our website, uh, last year, we introduced this painting of a couple of deer and some dried grass. Again, this is sort of a fall picture. And this was on an oval, but it certainly could have been done on a rectangle. Um, just as a caveat, if you end up doing anything on these little oval canvases. I haven't done it yet, but you really need to staple all the way around the outside edges of these because um, if they ever come loose, good luck ever getting it back. And so you actually staple the canvas? You've got to staple. You've got to get a staple thing and staple around the edge here. And then I thought one way to frame that would be to just get some braid, you know, at the fabric store and just glue it over the staples. It would make a nice frame. Yeah. Just a thought, you know, Not a bad be, idea. be pretty. But I, I had a painting one time just totally come apart, and it really just can't be fixed. Uh, and, and, you know, just stuff like that happens, and so you don't want to. And then, if you'll remember, also, last, uh, listen, I think it was last week we did this one, right? The fall scene with the. Yep with the snow and everything, and we talked about reflections and the angle of reflections. So we've, we've really got a neat fall theme. And then on our own website a couple weeks ago, we did this one, but I showed you on YouTube under uh, Insanely Easy Ways to Do Trees or something like that, the, the Lazy Artist Way to Paint Trees, I showed you how to layer uh, foliage on trees. All right, and so then this, this particular 9 by 12 lesson is on our website under fall things. That's and then, so we got, we got really excited about fall this year, early. And then this was one of our uh, lessons that we put on our website for our members. When we say our website, a gingercooklive.gallery has uh, over 300 lessons, uh, starting from very beginning basic lessons to more advanced lessons. And as you follow along and you do these things, you're going to find that you're going to tackle these bigger paintings and be very successful at it. So this was the old prospector's mill. And it, one of the easiest ways to find anything on our website, we have a Google search engine. And what you do is you just type in a couple of keywords, and man, everything has anything to do with that will show up. It's just like uh, we have our own little miniature Google thing. There's a few ads that you have to pass through before you get to that part, you know, scroll down. Because, you know, 
Well, that's the like cost. Ten thousand dollars to buy it. In a month and, if we sorry, wanted to guys. buy it, yeah, we couldn't <laughs> buy it. But anyway, it's a it was a very fast way to paint things. So if you're liking this stuff. That's what we wanted to you know share with you. Things you could do that you know you could you know learn to paint and enjoy. You know, which we want you to be able to do. So we're going to like to uh, thank Lady Fair for the donation. She says thanks for sharing your art with us tonight. Lady Fair, that is so nice. That is the nicest thing. For, I, I, I want to say this, too, for those of you who don't know it. Our live shows are the only way that anybody can, um, you, know, d you know, donate on YouTube. To, you know, if somebody wants to donate to an artist that's, you know, teaching on YouTube on a live show, there's a little donut, don donate button. Where is it? It's down in the chat. And we, it says some, say something. There's a little dollar sign on all devices except Apple devices currently. Yeah, apparently Apple doesn't want us to have any money. I don't know. I don't know what their deal is, but hopefully that will change. And, hopefully, and you can yeah. always make donations directly to our website, uh, gingercooklive.gallery. You have a green button there that says scholarship fund. Scholarship fund. And, and last month we scholarshiped, I know, about eight people. Yeah. Uh, some people, yeah, you know, that we had a couple month. of people that were terminally ill that uh, got scholarship. To, we had some, you know, some um, you know, the different stories we, you know, that we don't always share with people, but uh, the, you're, you, for every time we get a donation, someone else gets help. So you're not just, you're helping everybody. It's, it's a wonderful thing to do, so we appreciate it. Uh, now, we were, well, before we get started, we have, uh, Pam asked, do we have a transfer or traceable on this? It's on our website, and the link is in the description. And it's also, if you go to gingerbooklive.gallery, right on the home page, scroll down a little bit, you will see the painting. Yeah. And that's the updates. Yeah, those are the updates. And so here's here's the deal, you guys. So here's our picture. And let's just, let's get down to the nitty gritty of this. And by the way, if you haven't subscribed, now is the time to do so. <laughs> you can see our subscriber count is up at four thousand three hundred and thirty two. We'd like to see that climb by a few hundred. Yeah, listen, help okay, us out, you guys. Bottom Appreciate line, it. guys, is we'd like to hit fifty thousand before the end of the year, and we can do it with your help. So, yeah. Don't you sound like PBS? Well, why not? I mean, and you what know, the heck? I just, it, you know, nobody, nothing bad happens to you. You don't get extra emails. Nothing scary happens to you. But it's very nice for the, um, you know, for the artists that you subscribe to or, you know, I mean, may, you know, okay, I got to tell you this. All right, this is too funny. <laughs> this is not that there's anything funny about the storm. But my good friend Yvonka was telling me that her son, who's like 23 and lives in Houston, says that there's some YouTube videos out there running around saying that it was actually terrorists that caused this storm. It wasn't going to be a Category 1, and they seeded the clouds. I love it. So, I mean, maybe there's, that's your favorite channel. You should subscribe to that one. I don't know. I just thought it was interesting. You know, there's nothing like being a gossip monger and passing things along. But the best one I heard was the lady that was convinced it was the eclipse that did it. Yeah, I love that one. So, But anyway, nonetheless, it, it doesn't matter how it got here. It's here and we're all dealing with it. And our fr here's the thing that's happened in Texas is that you can't get anywhere. The grocery stores can't get the trucks in because the roads are all closed. The freeways are underwater. Um, and you know, can, I, can I get on my high horse for a minute? Get on your soapbox. I want to get on my soapbox. Did you know in this country that every state has their own way of doing roads. <laughs> Everybody every, has their every, state. Every time we travel. That's a, they, 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 there isn't, <laughs> somebody didn't look, and their own way of doing schools, too, like eat schools state, state to state. So someone didn't say, you know, I've looked at these 50 states, and I think Arkansas has got the best. Let's all copy them. Oh, no, we're independent. We're going to do it ourselves. Well, I don't know how many other people's freeways flood, but whoever thought of these, you just wonder, don't you? And, of course, then there's the whole idea of building a city on a swamp. There's that other issue, too. Let's not get into that. All right. Just hey, we'd like to say a special thank you to uh, Layla. She went over to the website to make the donations because she's on an iPad, and we do appreciate that. Oh, Layla, thank you so Thanks much. Thanks for going through the extra effort. Thank you very much. All right, so I hate to even say the word perspective because it makes people just kind of run and scurry, oh, right? Man, like rats awesome. leaving a sinking ship. But I want you to think about... Let's say, think about, when you think about a bench, I want you to think about a box, all right? So every painting has a horizon line. Now, one of the things that really confused me when I was first starting out painting was I couldn't figure out where the horizon line was, all right? Well, the horizon line basically is your eye level, all right? And it's, a, it's the viewer's eye level, all right? And so, if you were, for instance, if you're using a camera, 
a lot of times because of where it is it's going to be just dead center in the middle of the picture and I had a professional photographer one time tell me that I was too tall to be taking pictures I needed to kneel down to take them because I was getting the horizon lines in the wrong place and you know, I just got Cinnamon to do it. She's shorter. She's a really good photographer. <laughs> like, You're short. You go take these pictures. You know what I want. Go take these pictures. I'm saying my best paintings were from photographs Cinnamon did. Really, honestly. I might tell you that. So, all right. So, we've got, um, we went to Europe one year, and I kind of hired her to uh, be my official photographer. And we had a ladder, and she, well, she was a lot younger than do. We were all a lot younger, and she was climbing all over stuff. And when she wasn't doing that, she was bicycling. I got her bicycle, kind of a bribe, and she got to call John every day. That was the thing. They were just they hadn't been married too many years. It was before Honey. And uh, she'd call him every day on the phone, you know. It was interesting. I said, well, you won't have anything to tell him when you get home. But, you know, apparently that was okay. So, okay, so, John, I'd call you every day. Maybe, and I think. <laughs> I think yeah, I would. Basically, you do. Yeah, you do. Hey, <laughs> Teresa just made a donation. Thank you for teaching an old artist new tricks. Oh, gosh, Teresa. I thank love you when so you guys much. put in the comments. Thank you. Thank you. I love that. Yeah, I love the comments. Okay, so here's a horizon line. I just declared it, right? I've declared this a horizon line, okay? And, and you as an artist can do that. And you, you decide where it is. It could be here. You could say it was here. Now, if it was here, now the horizon line is where... The sky meets the earth if there are no, or the water if there are no mountains, okay? So if this was the, if this was the um, horizon line, then obviously all this is sky, right? Obviously. All right, but if this were the horizon line, say up here, generally you break it into thirds. That's kind of what like, people do. There's the, you know, the middle ground, foreground, and far background, <laughs> all right? Middle ground, foreground. <laughs> Middle ground, background, foreground. All right, something like that. And generally, the closest things are to you, the, the more detailed. Does that make sense? Farther things away, kind of like a Magoo moment. So maybe this is your horizon line. So then these would be your clouds, all right? Or, for instance, maybe your horizon line's down here. Let's just say it's down here. And you've got some mountains, right, like that. Okay, and you don't see the horizon line. You just kind of have to guess that it's um, down here, all right? All right. Maybe we've got a mountain here or something like that. And you, you don't know. There's my, my horizon line's back here, okay? But in any event, a lot of times you can tell from a photograph if you're doing a photograph. We've talked a lot about that in different ways. So now that we've kind of decided that you've decided where the horizon line is, you're in charge of it, okay? And, and if you're looking at a photo, you can kind of tell, too, where they decided it was. And sometimes you may not like where they put it because, again, like I had with pictures, that you don't really want it dead center in the middle if you can help it. It's okay, but it's just generally not a good idea. So, right, so I'm saying, like, right back here, there's my horizon line, okay? So if I want, a, if I want, if I'm going to say my, I want a, um, I'm going to say my vanishing point is right here, right? I'm going to just say everything is going to come off this vanishing point, and I want to draw a box, all right? So I'm going to just arbitrarily put that vanishing point there just for now, okay? Just play with me for a minute. All right, so I want to make a box, right, like that. Now, it's looking straight at me, so these lines here, okay, are going to, these lines here are going to be parallel to the sides of the canvas, and these are going to be looking at me just like this, because we're not, we're not doing anything too tricky here with the perspective. Oh, it's one point perspective, okay? Now, what happens to this from this corner? This goes like that to the horizon line. This corner, this goes like that to the horizon line. So, okay, so, all right, so I'm going to say my bench or my box is this long, right? So, again, I'm going to just cut it off right here. Now, what happened to this, the, the leg of the box? Well, remember, this line is doing that. So then my leg is going to come down here, okay? Now, you probably wouldn't see that leg, but if you're saying that this is the top of the box, like this or the bench, right? Now I'm going to put another little bench right next to it. See that? Okay. Again, the leg is right here. So these legs are shorter because they're all following up this area. Now, generally speaking, where benches can get a little tricky is that usually you don't have, except in like a church pews or something, you don't have, uh, you, you know, your bench isn't like a chair with the back is straight up. I mean, you could have it that way. You, oftentimes you'll see it, you'll see it kind of curved, and what will happen is maybe it's going to do this, kind of like a backward C. So again, what happens here? You're saying that's the height of this back of there, then what happens here? 
Ah, so then what happened to this one? It's got to follow the same angle as that, but it's going to be shorter. Does that make sense? It does, doesn't it? It, it does, does to me. Then the light bulb goes off. All right, so then I've got another bench here, but it's a little shorter because I've, whoops, get out of my way here, like this. And then here, the same thing. Look, that one's even shorter still. Now, here's my, okay, so then I'm going to say that, okay, that that's my, um, uh, and you're not going to see the back of that. So that's basically what we're talking about. Well, all right, so I'm saying here's my vanishing point. Um, all right, so if my vanishing, if I wanted it even more turned, right, like for instance, you can kind of see, can you see the bench now? Can you see how that was constructed? With the vanishing point being sometimes your vanishing point is off the canvas. It's actually out here somewhere. You've got to bring your horizon line and you just keep following those lines, all right? So that would be how that would do it. So then this line here would be like this, but then it's going to get narrower here. Does that make sense? And then here's the next line of our bench. And then here's, I mean, another plank, say, right, like that. Here's a plank. And here's a plank. But as they come down, they get skinnier, right? And then the same thing with these little dark lines that are on the bench. You know, you're just going to follow your lines, right? Then here we go, like that. Now, maybe you've got, I mean, you could have a terrific, um, you know, I mean, you could, you could get crazy with the bench, right? I'm just saying, you, I mean, you could, right? You, you could do, you can make up any old crazy bench, right? Just saying, you know, once you get down to you decide what the legs are, whatever you do, do, do them all the same. It's kind of like when I first took up sign painting, the first thing they told me was it doesn't matter what you do, but make sure all your letters, are, all the A's look the same and all the B's look the same. Make sure they're all the same. You can pretty much make up any old stupid letter. Well, the same thing here. Make sure that everything kind of follows along. Or if you wanted to say that this came out like this, then this one would come out and go back, come out and go back. Does that make sense? Like that. So this is a super easy way to create any kind of bench, isn't it? I think you guys would be extremely happy to do that. So any questions, John? Do we have anything going on? Uh, no questions. You had a little don donation came, came in from Becky. And she goes, I love painting the toy shop and can't wait for the additional paintings that go with it. Oh, man, Becky, this is what she's, what's Becky talking about? Do we have the toy shop, too? This is our Christmas village piece. John's been working on it all day. And um, these are these little 6 by 8 uh, canvases. Aren't these well done? Look at the look at the way they've done the wood inside of them, and this is our uh, holiday series, and this is the um, bakery. This was what the church, or it doesn't have to be a church. I told people it could be anything. Here's the toy store that she talked about, which is part of the series, and we have the fa the the frozen fountain. Don't you love that right in here where the gate? And you see the little, everything's painted around the sides. Now, the neat thing about these is you can stand them up. This is why we paint the top. You can just stand them up on a shelf or hang them on a wall. And, you know, these make darling. I don't know if you guys like doing, you know, and every year we're going to add more. But we'll hope to have at least six in the collection. We'll try to get them all done uh, before October, October 1st, right? That'll be our goal is to get, we have a couple more. But these will be up this week, right, John? Uh, that's, that's the goal. That we'll have these on our website, and they're in our I've store. Got them, I got them uploaded to the server. I just have to finish them off. Yeah, he has to make the little pictures and everything. But I think they're wonderful. And then you can just do some great imagination. With these, Like, for instance, when I did the bakery, I added some garland. So I think this one needs garland, too. You know, yeah, you know, kind of tie them. Probably tie them in a little bit. I didn't put any garland around here, but you certainly could. So I kind of like it just the way it is. But I, I did put it here. And, of course, you could put some here, too, if you wanted. But, I mean, this is your, uh, I got you going here. This is your holiday thing. So thank you very much for that. I love these. Really, really love these. And by the way, well, I want to make sure that we're while we're doing this, one of the things we like to do on our live show is play art trivia. So let's get, a, let's get that. Go, ooh, ooh. I just dropped it. It's three. Do you believe me? <laughs> <laughs> I have to believe you because that's your, that's it's, a, it's that's on the, one the floor. And I'm connected to a microphone, so I'm kind of like a statue. I've got limited movement on the floor. Movement. We have a couple of questions in regards to your perspective. Yes. Uh, and before that, oh, somebody made a donation via our website. Again, they must be on an Apple device. And it was Kathy. <gasps> Kathy, so thank you. So thank you very much for that, Kathy. 
And the question, Cheryl, go, Ginger, go over the back board of bench again, please. Oh, yeah, let's do that. Okay, well, wait a second. And then another one is, what, what do the curves on the bottom help with perspective? Well, as you do the curves, you have to realize the curves are going to get smaller as they go down. It's really hard to do in chalk. Yeah, let's just let's just erase these and let's do this again. But it does get smaller. You know, the curve itself has to go smaller. It just you have, you have to, to make it the same. You wouldn't have to do a curve. I'm just saying you could. You could just have a bend. You could just have something that goes straight down like this. But remember, if you're saying this is, remember, this was our square. We started off with a square here, right? So then here's our vanishing point. So then you could draw a line down like this. So then this leg here is this height, and this is this height, this is this height. Does that make sense? And then maybe I've got the front of our um, front of our bench. Maybe there's a little part, and there's a little part here. Now, here's the deal. If you said you wanted a curved bench, it's not really perspective, only in the sense that it's probably got a, it's, it's got to have a foot like this. It's, you've got to, it, and then this would it, would, it would duplicate it. Whatever you did here, you'd duplicate it. It doesn't matter what you did. You just make the same one. Does that make sense? wouldn't have to have a curved leg go out, but if you had a curved leg, that's how you do it. And this one, we did a little bit of a curved leg. See, we didn't do, it wasn't real fancy, but we did slightly curved leg. And to really do it, a sock folder, folding type person, you would draw guidelines down to your vanishing point so you can get your curves and everything proper. Yeah, I mean, you could do that. Now, the, as far as your question on the back of it goes, let's just, let's just start again, and I'll show you this again. I don't mind showing this a couple times because I think that helps people. All right, so we've said that this is our bench going down like this. So, we say here's our first bench, and here's our second bench, right like that, right? Now, this line here and this line here and this line here are parallel to the top and bottom of the canvas, all right? And so then I'm going to say that the top of my, back of my bench is going to be about like this, right? Going to, that's the height of my bench. So now I've got another line coming down here like that. Do you see it? So then this one here, this is the end of the bench. Again, this is going to curve like that, all right? The same thing here. This is going to curve like that. This is going to curve the back of the bench. Now the first thing I've got, all right, let's just say, let's, uh, here's the back of this bench here. Now I've got, a, I've got a plank and as it goes down to the vanishing point it gets narrow. This plank is wider here and gets slightly narrower. So this is skinnier than that one. Then I'm going to skip a space and say here's my next plank and then I'm going to do the same thing. It's going to go down here to this vanishing point. So this, this um, the side, the back, the side, the side on this bench the boards are thinner back on this one than they are on this one. Okay, so um, if you had a if you had a light post, let's just get let's just be the last of the big spenders here, and and put a light post. All right, so let's got some some sort of fancy light post. I like that, don't you? Some sort of little fancy light post like this. Maybe we'll. Put, make a ball here like that, some sort of little light post like that, right? Now, it's going to do the same thing. I'm going to draw a line down here like this. So, oh, I just did that. How did I do that? Oh, I, my hands were smeary. Sorry. <laughs> wow. Wow. I don't, you can see I don't work with chalk very much, do I? Okay. Sorry. Put that back. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Sorry, sorry. All right. So then here's my next light post here. Here's one here. See? Maybe, you know, so here's another. So this is the top of this light post. It's all right. Okay. All right. That really looks nice. Can you paint that? Oh, yeah, we well, could you could put the light post you could put light posts in if you wanted. Kind of fit some fa fancy little light post, right? And um, um, or you could do some I mean we could even do those are kind of kind of funky looking light light posts. Let's do something better. Let's just say that there was a you know, I like the ones that do this. Oh, yeah. Kind of the three-circle light post, don't you? But the circles would get smaller, too, friends. Okay. And just, there you go. See? So there's your, there's your light post going back, too. All right? So then I'm going to say that I've got a path that's going here. Okay, so here's how wide my path is, right? But maybe I'm going to zigzag it down here like this. It's still, it's still going to get, it's still going to end up very small down here. 
I keep, um, let's see, we don't have a brown chalk here. Got some brown chalk. Here, here, let's just do this. Okay, everybody's with me on the bench. You can maybe see that better. Yeah. All right, there's the top of the bench. This is square, square across. This is the top of the bench. Like that, okay. There, does that make sense? So, I mean, you're going to just... So, when you're thinking about it, the vanishing points down there, because we said the horizon line was there. Oh. So, I mean, that it, it all changes depending on where you say the horizon line is. And then where you decide your vanishing point is on your picture. For the angle, it's going to, you know, a line's going to run off to the horizon. It's going to start here and go to your horizon line, all right? My horizon line was up here. <laughs> that would change it again. It would change it completely if I had my horizon line up here. Does that make sense, you guys? My horizon line was up here. That would change. Oh, it changed the whole thing. It should change the You'd whole thing. You'd be a little thing. ant looking up at it. Yeah, it changed the whole thing. So it just depends on where you said your horizon line is where the sky meets the earth if there are no mountains or the water okay so in, in a boat for instance uh, let's just take this for a minute and just raise this I hope this I hope this is helpful because this is what we want it to be well I've got a couple questions for sure you. do you have some questions John while I'm raising this yeah Sandra's asking Ginger how can I make a stone path or tiles in perspective and not looking flat oh that's a good one I like that. Let's answer that. That's a great question. The question is, in case for those of you who can't hear John, how can Sandra well, can make a, a path? I'm sure she can hear you, but I, I like to repeat the question. Okay. Sometimes when you repeat the question, other people are going, what was that? So the question is, I've got a stone path, and I want to make the stones. So let's just do that. You know, one of the paintings is the, rose ga the big rose gate. We have that one? A rose gate, you know, the one with all the flowers and everything? I'll show you. We have a painting that, you know, it's kind of like this. It's got a, um, it's got a wall here, and then there's a gate here like this, right? It's got a wall here like that, and there's a, there's a wall, and there's just a gate, you know, with some sort of little posty thing, right? Okay? And this is all flower gardens. Now, way back here, behind, behind our wall is our vanishing point. So, so way back here... We're not going to see it, so we're going to say that we're going to say if this is our vanishing points back here somewhere. So here's where our um, thank you. Here's what I'm talking about. Here's a here's the painting. This is one of the paintings on our website. Okay. So what you've got to appreciate when you're doing something like this, you know, so the path is following along way back here somewhere is our vanishing point. You can kind of see it even from the path. It's way back here. So so what do you do with this? Well, one of the things you want to do is that. Um, you know that the stones in front are going to be larger. And, if, if, and, and if, first off, I tell you, just do this. Okay? Because remember, you're putting those lines back to this imaginary vanishing point by the gate, right? So you know that these, these stones back here are, are smaller than these. So the trick is on something like this is that if you make a circle like that, it's not going to look flat. So one of the first things you've got to do is you've got to make kind of oval stones, right, like this. So they've got to stay oval, and the, they're bigger in front. And you're going to see them almost like little boxes. You're going to see, um, you're going to see them, and then as you get farther back, they're going to get smaller. So you're going to have a light side. Where'd that little brown pencil go? And then when we're looking at them, you're going to see a dark side to them, too, here like that. Do I have any here? So maybe there's going to be some, you know, grout or something in between. But you're going to see a, um, um, here, let me just color this in so you can kind of see what I'm talking about, right? So then you've got, a, um, you've got your stones, and they get smaller as they go back. And if you remember that, that, and keep them more oval and almost elliptical, kind of like lily pads. Okay, so the farther they go. So the biggest mistake people make is they make these big circles. Well, that can't be that way. It's, it, they flatten out. And I would say the best thing to do is find a photograph of what you're trying to do and watch where the, what you see. All right? Take a look at what you see. But even if this was a 
it was a pond in here like this next to it. There's the, let's say there was, right? Um, this lily pad in the front is going to be larger than this one, all right? And so you get back here, you're barely going to see them. But that, the things get smaller as they go back. So that indicates, it's a little bit too big, that indicates um, a, a distance, okay? So that's one of the things that you do. For instance, like, because uh, we know how big something is. If you put, like, for instance, um, when you have a landscape like this, we've got a pretty good idea how big this is because we put some posts and we put this gate, so we have an idea how tall the person would be that was walking in here. But, but in some paintings, you really don't know. Like, for instance, uh, this one, what we did, we don't really know how big those trees are. We haven't put anything in here to indicate size. In other words, if we put in things that everybody knows about, like if we put in, a, um, say, a transistor radio sitting there, that would give us a sense of how tall these trees were. Or if we put a deer here we would get a sense of how big these were. If we put a, um, you know, these trees back here, if we put a big house back here, I'm just going to mess this up, because gonna just like, cause it's dry, right? If we put a big house back here, this house would be too big for those trees. Does that make sense? So sometimes, in a perspective, it's just the idea that things are getting smaller as they go back, right? So um, that's one thing you can do without... You know, just just know that they get smaller and also they get grayer and out of focus. That would be a thing that you could absolutely remember on, on that. Ash Winnie had a great idea. Do you have a playlist for your conceptual lessons such as this one? Well, you know, Ash Winnie, I think I need a playlist for those. I, uh, we've got a few of these and occasionally we just, we just get down to the nitty gritty and talk about how to draw stuff, right? Like for instance, I don't know if you showed Van Gogh's chair. Do you have that picture anywhere, John? That was one of the recent, you know, we've had some really beautiful, we try to do a lot of variety on our, on our website. For instance, we don't know what everybody, I guess what everybody wants to paint. I can kind of tell, like for instance, I can't show you on YouTube because I don't want to upset the advertisers. We had a beautiful Renoir nude that was one of our lessons on our website because people asked to paint, you know, they wanted figure painting. And um, so we have one, but um, I want to, not showing it to you. But on the other hand, we've got a chair, like a Van Gogh chair. Um, as opposed to, it's around here somewhere, it was 8 by 10. You got a Van Gogh chair anywhere? Do we have a cat? There's a cat. All right, um, this, was, this is going to be the lesson that we do this week on our, on our um, website. And it's an abstract rose, all right? It's an abstract rose, and this is more about mixing color. It really has nothing to do with the perspective, all right? But sometimes we'll have a lesson that has to do with perspective. In fact, I want to kind of talk about that, too, because we talked about a chair. A chair is not that different. It's just a, oh, he's got it, all right? I actually go through great detail on how to draw in a chair, all right? Now, this was absolutely, his, his, I went, when I looked at Van Gogh's piece, his tiles were a little cattywampus, but he had so many lines, he almost had to do that because the way this chair is done is really interesting because it's kind of tilted at an angle. So it's inside a room, so we don't know where the horizon line is. We're just going to have to guess. But I want you to notice how the legs are kind of far apart. And this line is, uh, you know, these are not straight. Normally you'd think of it being straight up and down. This is straight up and down here. It's got the front legs splayed. And you can see where it's a box, right? For instance, I would say just, you know, if you, if you just... Uh, I remember one time Cinnamon was going to art school and she was taking a drawing class. And one of the girls in the class um, explained to the teacher, she says, I don't do boxes. She didn't want to do boxes. But one of the reasons they have you draw a box in art school is because uh, so much buildings and everything is just basically, I mean, everything's boxes, really, you know, boxes and so forth. So uh, if you imagine that this was a chair here, now wait, wait, just just kind of bear with me here. I'm going to say this is a chair. Now what happens? All right, let's just, let's lower this chair a bit like this. I'm going to just lower it like this because I think that's a little big here for the chair. Okay, and I'm going to say here's a leg and here's a leg. Remember, we just talked about a box. Maybe we're saying there's a, there's an arm for the chair like that. Okay, here's the seat. Here's the back leg. Okay, um, this is just sort of a straight up and down chair, but like this, okay? So 
kind of knowing how to draw a box um, helps you know how to draw a chair, doesn't it? And it's the same idea. So, you know, kind of playing with, playing around with that. Here you go, and then you do this. And so you're saying that this line has to come straight down here. And a lot of times, I think the reason people ask for traceables, and I'm not saying you shouldn't do it. Sometimes you're in a hurry, you just want to trace it on, and you don't want to fool with it. But sometimes it'll become second nature to you. When you're writing your no name, you don't ask for traceable. You just sign your name. And we all make letters. I mean, all our handwriting is slightly different, and everybody's painting. That's another thing, too, I want to say. No two artists are going to paint the same thing. If we all went to, we were all, just pretend we were all professional artists, and say they took us to some sort of beautiful scene place and gave us all easels and said, paint this, none of us would come up with the same painting. Everything's based on your imagination, your handwriting, uh, you know, the, just the way you hold your brush, your brush strokes, how fast or slow. All of that is uniquely you. So whenever you're doing one of these lessons, just, oh, it doesn't look exactly like me, great. It's got to look like you. Mm. And I never, this is why we go to the old masters. This is why I do ginger cook originals. This is why we change up stuff all the time. This is why I'll offer something like this. Not because even, just as like playing the piano. Did you ever play the piano and they made you do all those silly exercises? No one ever told me why you had to do them. I, the reason you do them is you're building memory, color memory, muscle memory, so that maybe something like this doesn't look, they say, well, that doesn't appeal. Don't worry about whether you can hang this in your house. If you want to get the lessons on stuff, if you want to learn the lessons, get the lessons and just do them small. And then when you're inspired by something, paint it large. Like, for instance, our Wave and Water class oh, last month did Venice. I want you to look at all the perspective lines. Can you see what I'm talking about? About this vanishing point that's way off of here, you guys? You're seeing that? The same thing I talked about, the bench. This isn't any different, is it? Okay? For these, Probably all these... Easier. It's just boxes. It's, you know, this is just really boxes. In fact, um, I think you have to really travel around the world to find some architecture that's kind of new. I could blindfold you and take you to any shopping mall in the United States, and if you didn't know what the climate was, you wouldn't know what state you were in, because everybody just says, oh, I like this box, let's make thousands of these, right? Uh, <laughs> Sometimes I loved it when people get something different with architecture, and I think one of the reasons everybody likes Venice is because it's that old stuff that was so pretty, very ornate and so forth. But again, this is all, you wouldn't shy away from this once you understand, and photographs will tell you where the vanishing point is. That's the other thing. In a photograph, you'll be able to tell where it is. Now, this is the, now that was last week's a month's wave in water. This month, we're actually just learning to paint we're painting rocks. So uh, uh, every month our master class, and someone asked me yesterday, do you have to be a master artist to paint this? It helps to have some have done a few paintings where you can at least do the back to basics. If you, you should be able to do a one cookie lesson pretty, you know, very competently, one or two cookie lesson. But if you're up to t past two cookies, I'd say try it because I think some of you may be surprised at how easily you get stuff like this. It's just a matter of, and we do a lot, it's repetition. We paint a lot of water in a lot of different ways, and so that you get so comfortable painting water, it's, it's, it is second, second nature, nature to you. That's all. That's what we're trying to do. So any more absolutely fabulous questions? Uh, yeah, this one's kind of off topic. How do you make a frog skin shiny or smooth or, you know, glossy? Do you have my frog? It's, uh, it's, do you have my picture of the frog? Didn't we give that one away? No, we didn't give it away. The frog. Don't we have the frog the, in the little gold it, frame? No, you gave that one away. Did I? You keep saying you want that one, but you've given it away. <laughs> Who did we give that to? That was your hairdresser. Oh, I didn't give her the frog. What did you give her? It wasn't the frog. Well, the frog's not. Well, a she, wall. she wouldn't have any use for a frog. <laughs> <laughs> well, the frog was it must have hopped away because it's not on the wall. <laughs> Well, too bad. We have a great frog on our... We actually have a frog on our stuff. You know, so how a do you make any... on our stuff. Uh, on our website. We have a frog painting on I our website. I spend hours on and, that Oh, website. okay. And then... Yeah. Yes, yeah, sorry, John. And then on um, YouTube, I've got a great lesson on how to frame that frog picture. All right? Froggy is so cute. So the thing is, how do you do like a lizard scanner? Anything. You want to make anything shiny. 
is that, you know, start with, if I had a good photograph of a lizard or a frog, I'd show you. I'd be happy to show you. We have anything I can show people? How fast can we print something out? I would show you. I'll tell you what. Next time we do a live class, I'll take a moment and I'll show you how to do a frog. How to do, you know, how to make something kind of shiny. But, for instance, on anything, on anything, it's always about lights and darks. Okay? It's about the way, how the light is reflecting off of something. And so, it, uh, for instance, rocks... When they're wet, they um, they have a tendency to, to reflect the sky. Like uh, so, if the sky is kind of gray, then they're going to be kind of gray. But if the sky were blue, they'll have almost a blue tone to them. You know, wet rocks. I mean, you know that. Have you ever spit on a rock and it changes color? I do not spit on rocks. My what mother, has a rock done to me? Well, <laughs> for those of you who are rock connoisseurs, you have to be a rock <laughs> connoisseur, John. But <laughs> just. What happens is you're walking along the beach and you're looking for agates. You guys know what I'm talking about. Those little blocks that you can see through. And so you, there's a little, you know, small, about the size of this, um, you know, pencil sharpener. You pick a rock up like that and you want to know if it has potential. So you spit on it. And then if it's shiny, it looks different than when it's all dried. And this is a rock that would be good in the rock polisher. You didn't know that. Wow. And I'm if you hold it up to the light... Well, you could dip it in the water too, but then that would, you know, but you may not be near the water. But anyway, that's how you. I thought I was at the beach. You said I was walking up and down. Does the beach not have water? <laughs> Just asking. It does, but my I can spit on it right now. So walk to the <laughs> walk down to the water, bend over, put the rock in, or or I can just spit on it and then see if it was worth walking to the water. <laughs> I mean, there's so many steps one does in a day. I know people get excited when they do thousands of them, not so much me, right? But anyway, even as a kid, I wasn't big on that. But anyway, yeah. Now, Ruth has an important question. Okay. John, do you still have your dried-up lizard? Of course I do. Oh, would you like to put him over here and show everybody? See you guys want to see this disgusting what gecko? What are you going to do to him, though? I won't touch him, but you can't leave him here long. because I've got cause it, <laughs> Don't leave him here long. <laughs> Yeah, so, yeah, no, I think these are great questions. I mean, because isn't it neat to be able to, you know, you, I, I think it's nice to be able to ask someone a question and that actually, you know, maybe can be helpful and tell you what it is. Here's that. You may put him on the, on the thing. I'm not sure if I need something lighter than that. Here. Okay. There he is. What there is he is. Isn't he great? This is not great, but John oh, likes him. Zoom in on here. Oh, you want to zoom in? Hold oh, this way. Here, I just bring it down. Put it down on the ground. Yeah, this is why we get to dislike stuff like this. People are running out of the room now, John. This is why I wasn't going to dislike her video, but I'm seeing this dead thing now. And <laughs> That's the dead thing. That's my gecko. Uh huh. And it's opposed to what? <laughs> Look at him. He's still in good shape too. Uh huh. Isn't that just perfect? <laughs> All right. Well, listen. That was the highlight of the day. It's not even Halloween, right? We're showing you dead things. Okay. All right, so you see that. Now, look, I'm going to just sit there and say, but if I can, if I wanted to say the chair was going in this direction, here's another chair, right? I'm going to start with the box, right, like that. I'm going to start with my box, okay? And I want to say the chair is facing this way. All right, it's a little different than our bench, but let's just say, right, there's our bench. I don't know why I want to make this chair so tall, but let's just, let's just bring the seat down like this. So, all right, so then you've got, and usually you've got a table that's, um, uh, you've got to get stuff. Usually your chair seat is about, I've, I've really paid attention to this, it's about three quarters of the way up at your table, right? So if you were just wondering how to put like a, you know, if you wanted to put, and then you would, suppose you had a chair here, you wouldn't, um, you know, you'd follow the circle around like, like that, see? Like that, and then there's the top of this chair here, okay? Little table. So then if you just, um, uh, you know, you know, want to do table and chair for your, um, that's where this leg would be here. You'd see that leg, but you wouldn't see any of these because we had a table, we have a tablecloth, right? Saying there's a tablecloth. So knowing how to just throw in a bench, throw in a chair, these are really helpful things to know how to do, I think. And I'm excited. So now you know all that. So then if you came in late, so why is she rattling on about any of this? Who cares? Because a, this lesson will now be up on our on YouTube. It's, it's processed. Is it, is it still processing? 
No, processing is done and should be releasing in five minutes. In five minutes, you'll be able to now you know, get out your 8x10 canvas, paint this a, a, your background a turquoise blue. You can go over to our website if you want to get the traceable. But I suggest with this marvelous instruction, you just play with it. Take some chalk. Try freehanding it in. I think you'll be better at it than you guess. Than you think. Than you think. Don't you think so? I think you'll be better at it. So when we go well, right after this lesson, heck yeah. So I now you're just a whiz it. at this, you know? Don't you think so? Now you're absolutely whiz, you know, some of these great secrets, right? So uh, any other questions before we uh, sign off for everybody? Yeah, we want to say uh, thank you to Sissy for going over to our website to make a donation. Oh, Sissy, thank you so much. We do appreciate that. Um, that's not a appropriate one we had. Not, that's oh, matter. somebody said something inappropriate. Oh, that's too bad. Well, if, you know, if you ground up, if you ground up the dead gecko... Make it ground them up and made a mummy paint. Okay, now happen. what is the genesis of the mummy paint? I got to tell the story again because those of you who haven't heard the story, um, there is a lady who wrote this book. It's really, it's a challenge to read it because um, I don't think she had an editor, but that's okay. Uh, those art, art, arty types like you and me, we're going to stick in there and read it. It was called The History of the Color Palette by Victoria Finley. And the reason we love this book is because it tells where all the toys came from, for instance. And one of the best ones that she told was a story about this mummy brown. So um, before, eight, before uh, 1865 was when the first paint tube was invented, and that was for watercolor. But at the time, Van Gogh and his friends, they, they were all painting out of tubes now. There very few people were doing the, um, where they put it in a pig's bladder and then tied it up and poked a hole at the bottom, squeezed out the oil paint, and then sewed it up at night. They, this is why the Impressionist guys could take their easels, these French easels, and go out in the countryside, because pig bladders weren't very transparent. You couldn't take them anywhere, but paint tubes, you could. So uh, kids that, uh, and also up until that time, just like cooks, the recipes for color were thick, guarded secrets. Uh, people went to art school and apprenticed under other artists, to learn how to mix their own mix these colors, and it was a it wasn't just something that was just passed lightly around, but once the paint tubes got into the art stores, then every lots more people started to paint, and these kids, I think their parents. This is in Victoria's book. Their parents had some connection to Egypt, and they thought they'd get into the paint making business, and they took some mummies, Egyptian mummies, true story, and they ground them up, and they made them into an oil paint, and they called it mummy brown. I think and, it's perfect. And, they, and there's some paintings in museums in Europe, and the big, big Louvre and the Prado and the big deal with, have been painted with Mummy Brown, okay? Well, it's a wonder that everybody in the world just doesn't hate us because, I mean, can you imagine how you'd feel if somebody went around digging up your relatives and putting them in paint and selling them to some other country. I mean, it's really offensive when you think about it, but these, these kids got caught. Nothing happened to them. They just sort of got kicked out of Egypt and surprised they weren't hung up by their thumbs because it's a really terrible thing to do. But then they went ahead, they kept going, and they thought, well, maybe it wasn't the mummies, and they were making money. So then they went ahead and decided to rob graves in England now it was someone else's relatives a little closer to home, <laughs> and then everybody was outraged. It's funny that some old king nobody seemed to care about, but uh, <laughs> but their relatives, their aunt Susan. Now it was a now it was a mummy of another deal. So anyway, they got caught and they went to jail for it. But there was an artist, and it made the headlines. It was around 1900, and there was an artist in New York, and he did a. He, bought, he had, took all his mummy brown tubes of paint, brought his friends over, and a priest, and they had a funeral and buried the uh, tubes of paint in the backyard. So that is the story of mummy brown. Good one. I story. think that's a good one to end on, don't you? No, because we have tons more now because you were going on. We didn't, didn't do our trivia question, so we're going to ask our trivia question, and I'll answer some of these questions that are going by. Sorry. That's okay. Not a problem. So the question is, during which century... Did mannerism appear in art paintings? Again, during which century did mannerism appear in art paintings? The 12th century, the 16th, or the 20th? Well, this would assume that anybody what? know what the heck mannerism was. Well, apparently mannerism doesn't run in your family, does it? Are you, is the peanut gallery talking? 
Talk to the hand because I, the I head think, isn't I, I think I, I'm hearing a buzz. I, I'm just hearing buzzing. <laughs> talk to the, I, talk to I'm the not hand. hearing anything right now. <laughs> da, 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 da. <laughs> so while, you're, while you are going over that, that was our number three question. That was a win. During which century did mannerism appear in art paintings? I will answer a couple of questions that went flying by. Which was? Am I going to be painting again when time permits? Yeah. It's just a time thing. Right now we have no time. There was something else. John, are you going to paint, do more paint lessons? Yes, I hope to. Um, Ginger, can you do a table with a white cloth? I think we have one up already. We do have a beautiful one. We sold the big original, but it uh, was in the auction. But we have a darling one with a white tablecloth and a chair and a patio garden. But we can certainly do more. Those are kind of fun, aren't they, tablecloths? Yeah, let's no, there do are. Those. And we're starting to get some answers in here. Uh, Lisa says 16th. Barbara says the 80s. Gail says the 16th. 16th, 12th, 12th from Michelle. Uh, Susan's going for the 16th three times, so I don't know if that's the... But she really is insistent on that. Yeah, she I wants think so. that. She, she, that. Susan thinks she's right. I don't know what mannerism is, so I can't make a judgment. Is that where they put people in it, mannerisms? I don't know. Well, you is can that certainly they, make a guess. Did they have, suddenly they showed people with table manners, mannerisms, uh, people doing things? Well, um, think about the paintings. Okay, let's think about the paintings. The 12th century is what were they painting? The 16th century. See that. If you think about the centuries and what was the topics, I give well. well give for you. instance, um, in the um, in the early days, people were painting scenes from the Bible, and historical scenes, right? Uh, still lifes and historical scenes. You know, stuff from the Bible because uh, you know, the, av the p p average population couldn't read, so stained glass windows and paintings were often done. And of course, the you know you've got to think about the Catholic Church, you know, the Sistine Chapel and all the you know really they were stories of you know of stuff. They were stories of things as opposed to um, Aunt Susie and her three dogs. Yeah. You know, so uh, the Aunt Susie and her three dogs really didn't get a lot of play until. About the seventeen, you know, you know, around seventeen uh, hundreds, I suppose. They, they still did portraits, though. But I'm talking about, you know, when they showed people doing stuff. So maybe I don't know, John. What's the answer? You have you, you have a thirty three percent chance of guessing. Guess one. Well, I'm going to say the la last the last one you said. The twentieth century? No, the seventeenth century. Yeah, I'm going to say the seventeenth century when well, they started. Well, I didn't give you that as a things. choice. I gave you the sixteenth century. Is that what the choice? Well, I'm going to say, well, they started showing people doing things, right? As yeah, opposed to saying, it is the 16th just century. scenes from the Bible and, you know, you know, angels and junk like that, right? Yeah. Not junk, but, you know, I mean, <laughs> that kind of stuff, right? I mean, it's kind of work it's on your terminology, don't we? Your, your um, connecting words. My website Again, peanut stuff. gallery, quiet down. <laughs> <laughs> it is the 16th century. According to Google, it was the 17th century. Somebody looked at it, but... According to our game, it's the 16th, so if you guess 16th, give yourself a 1,000 points. Woo! Didn't stump the artist that time. No, didn't stump the um, artist that time. <laughs> when you do a perspective, can you do it from the other side? Of course. Well, like, yeah. Let's do, like, yeah. Yeah, okay, so last one, you guys. We'll do it from the other side, all right? <laughs> yeah, sure. Okay, so we're going we're gonna to change it. It doesn't really matter. We can do it from the front. We can do it from the, uh, the rear. You can we even can do, do it, it down the middle. Yeah, we can do it from down the middle. And then what would that look like? I don't know. But let's say first off, again, what you, what we have to establish is a horizon line. So I'm going to say this is my horizon line right here. And I'm going to, oops. Well, you know, the interesting thing is that when you're doing chalk, it helps to put, the, you know, to draw with the pointy end. Don't you think so? Yeah. So that's a little helpful. Okay. So here. Woo -doo 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 -doo. There's our, all right. I'm going to just say, here's, I'm going to put the horizon line right in the middle. I mean, the vanishing point right in the middle. And I'm going to draw some lines out like this from it, like this. Uh, we got confirmation the lesson has been uploaded and has been released. Oh, perfect. So there Don't it leave is. us yet. Don't Come on now. This right, is so live, people. All right. So now I want a bench from here, right? Wait a minute. What are all those lines? I'm just showing the, the different. It, look, clouds. Did you know that clouds have perspective? Have perspective. They get smaller as they go down here, unless it's thunder clouds. I'm just saying that everything is affected. They're saying it's the vanishing point. So I'm going to start here with a box like this. I'm just going to make a little box. Okay? And um, that, so I'm going to draw some lines from the top of my box like that to there, right? And then remember, this line has to go this way. It's parallel to the top and bottom. Here's the sides, right? 
And then I'm going to say that here's a, here's a bench going back like this. So I'm going to draw a line from here down to there like that, see? So that's the height of this one. Yeah, everybody's with me, right? And maybe I want a longer bench because that's kind of a chintzy looking bench. Again, here we go. There's this bench and let's just do that. Okay. Maybe that's the middle section like that. Okay. And then here's the edge like this. So here's my, here's my bench like that. And it's going this way. So it really doesn't matter which way you have it. Okay. Or which angle you have it. Um, I could, I could put one here. Let's, let's, let's um, Let's put a little one here, okay? Again, everything's going down here. See, here's a little bench, right like that. So um, again, it just depends on, um, well, here we go, just making this kind of like that. But again, it just depends on how big you said something was, right? So probably if you came, marched over here like that, this, this, this box would be the same size. Does that make sense? Oh, that's the, baby, that's the baby's chair. That's my This mind. is like, yeah, it's, it, it really wouldn't be that size. But it, you get the idea. It doesn't really matter which drink you put it at. Now, let's just say, all right, so here's my, this is what we, so here's my uh, bench like this. All right, and there's my bench. You're going to see the under, underside of it like this. You're not going to see, you're not going to see much of this bench here because um, uh, we're looking at it straight on. See what I mean? We're looking at it again. We're looking at it straight on. Okay. So you're not going to see, you're going to see the same amount as you would like, like that way. So yeah. Um, it doesn't really matter. And maybe it'll help you if I take the top off and let you just see here's a box in the front. It doesn't really matter. Let's see, let's do because that got wet here. Let's just do this. Let's dry all this. All right, so here's my box and it's the front. I'm looking at it. Here's my there. So that's all you're gonna see. See? And then here's the legs of a box. So Again, it doesn't matter if it's going this way, if it's going this way, if it's on this side. It's all doing the same thing. And I would highly suggest now that you've got the basics, get a, get a little book on simple perspective and just you know, just sum through it. Mostly, one-point perspective is really easy. Mostly, I think you'd understand it easily. Okay? So, last question before we say goodnight. Um... Um... Did you ever have the... Uh Gregorian chants in school? I'll take that as a no. No. So you didn't have music appreciation. I had music appreciation. Oh, I did. I'm just saying, they dragged me to every stupid concert on the planet there in Seattle, and we all had to sit there through those things. No book or anything. Just had to sit there and listen to it. It's just, oh, yeah, we have music. And then we all, they always got hustled into, into singing, too. They, I, I always like what a group of people can do singing, because even the bad ones like myself that couldn't sing at all, you know, you didn't sound too bad when you know, the whole choir got going. It was pretty impressive. <laughs> Almost gives you goosebumps. I just but moved my mouth. I think I remember a song called Oh Beautiful Tree. I still remember that. And they did it all in harmony in school. But yeah, we did music appreciation. Um, sure, we did all that. Okay, are the grocery stores open now? Some are. But not for long. And not they can't. Long. Here's the problem with the food. The last update on the hurricane. The problem is that these silly freeways are all underwater. So no <laughs> trucks can get to the grocery stores to be happy to open. Um, if anybody would be there to stock them with food, but there's nobody there to stock them with food because they're all, the, the trucks can't get in. You can't get from the woodlands down to Houston today, all right? I couldn't make it to downtown Houston. Jerry's Artorama is surrounded by a mode of water of freeways. It's up high. Uh, Daniel can't get to work. He's hoping maybe by Friday that they'll be able to um, you know, we'll start to see things op opening and restaurants opening and we'll start to see, you know, life returning to normal. Um, if you turn on the TV, not that I'm, comp I am complaining. I don't want to sound like that because we're, we have power, we have internet. But I'm just saying that even, turn on the TV, I don't know what it's like in your state, but all there is is just depressing news of the flood. You know, yeah. thousands and thousands of people. I'm telling you what, they let out a reservoir the other day and some million dollar homes and some apartment buildings up to the third floor of the apartment buildings. They were evacuating people. They had a, um, let me just put this back here. They had a um, 
a guy on the news, and he'd come from Austin. If you can imagine this, his dad flew in from Ohio to Austin, which is about two and a half hours north of Houston, and they bought a boat and a motor, and they came down to Houston to rescue people. People are getting rescued because there's thousands and thousands of people that need rescued. They're talking about houses that are going to have water in them for months. I mean, it's terrible. And people are buying boats and coming in to help. And the whole slew of people from Louisiana came in with their airboats and uh, the National Guard and they're helicoptering people out of Galveston to, to Dallas. Um, both airports are closed. Uh, there are people stranded everywhere. Airports are closed. And if, if you, even, if, if, even if I had a space in my house, like if someone could stay here, no one could get to my house. My house is surrounded by an island of water. We've got about, what would you say, about two... two about a mile in each direction we can yeah. go, not even that. Yeah. And we're, we're, we're literally... We're on an island right now. We're an island. We're on Gilligan's Island. We're on Gilligan's Island. And, um, and the funny thing to me is is that the, in the, when John went to get grocery shopping, it was, the grocery store was open yesterday for about three hours, and he went in to get some milk and eggs, and all the fruits and vegetables were there, but there wasn't a cookie or a potato chip left. <laughs> we, got so. some, we got some footage for that. Yeah, and so, so, yeah, so we have the packing video done yet. Yeah, Sammy and I have finished that. We have to get it up. Uh, Ginger's keeping us busy on her stuff, though, right now. So we haven't done And also, we, we, we have everybody's, uh, we got about half the, uh, half the artwork that we sold for our auction, made it out before the flood, and then everything else is ready to go. But uh, but mail's not moving The yet. mail's not going anywhere. Nobody's getting any mail. So and, we, you know, John and I were supposed to go on holiday this week. We were supposed to leave Sunday. And we couldn't go, and so um, we'll probably, um, you know, just uh, hang tight and uh, see what happens. And see what happens because we just don't know what's going to happen. But uh, hey, listen, thanks for sharing. You made you make our lives uh, more bearable. enjoyable and oh, fun. Oh, enjoyable. Enjoyable. That's it's good. not bearable. I don't know if it's bearable for you, but for me, it's enjoyable. <laughs> I really appreciate everybody coming and hanging in there with us. We love you guys. We appreciate hey, and the you prayers and well tonight, wishes. When we're, when we're not painting. We have a clean feed. Well, we so didn't, the secret we is not to paint. Well, you couldn't count on a clean feed. And then, no. listen, for some of you who just don't like all the chatter, would they ever get on with just a lesson? Now you can go back to this lesson. It's just me, this series down to business, in about an hour and a half, how to paint this. I wonder if maybe they like to have this type of uh, lessons in the future. Where we just socialize for a little bit and then do the lesson. It's a thought. Why don't you guys give some feedback on that, on the recorded lesson, if you'd like to see more lessons done this way. Let us know. Okay, and final question is, when are you going to do the horse picture? The one running through the water, splashing. Well, where's, my, where's, my, where's my angel and my, um, my peaches? Where are those? Oh, I'm not sure where the peaches is. I know where well, the angel is. Well, really, it's not really an angel, but I think she reminds me of an angel. I did another Renoir. We've got this one coming up. We've got some really... Some old dead artist stuff. This is some, uh, coming up in coming weeks. Here's our little girl uh, praying. Um, and that's one of the lessons, that, not this week on our website, but next week on gingercooklive.gallery. And this then. One, this one fit in so well because the yeah, one yeah, yeah. And then this one is, um, and we've got this one. Don't you love this? This is a, a one with some peaches. I can almost feel the fuzz, can't you, in the grapes? That's coming on our website. So we've we filmed a lot of stuff. What we're doing is we're just filming in advance for our members. And, um, again, this came from one of our f famous old dead artists, and I love this, don't you, with the, with the background and the grapes and the fuzzy stuff. And Anyway, so that's what we've got going. And you've asked for some portraits, and this one looked fairly simple, so... Uh, and it will, this one will have a traceable, so you don't have to worry about that. So for those of you who like the idea of the Renoir but just wanted somebody with clothes on, we did you that one. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, we're, we try to accommodate, you know. And hey, and listen, thanks very much. Please subscribe and say that again. Share these videos with others. That helps YouTube find us and talk us up. And, if, and, and, and please subscribe. Um, we'd really like to get to 50000 before the end of the year, just kind of a goal for us. Thanks, everybody. Hope you enjoyed the show. We will be back sometime in the near future, and we will let you know when and where. But probably for sure you're going to get something Monday and Tuesday, whether it's live or... Or Memorex. Or members, but we'll Remember Memorex? Remember those commercials? Is that live or Memorex? Uh, vaguely. My memory isn't that good. 
Really? Did they, did they, did they shatter the, the champagne glass or something? No. Huh. All right, on that note, we're signing out. Good night, Bye. Ginger. Night, John. Night, Sammy. Night, Sammy. Bye, everybody. And now, without further ado, I have the distinguished honor and privilege of presenting to you the Queen of Color, the Mother of Artists, globally acclaimed, award-winning, master acrylic artist, and the star of our show, Ginger Cook, as she once again mesmerizes her audience with the daring do's and don'ts of painting with acrylics.